Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm in the basement playing around. I've got some new packages from China, some stuff that I ordered, some new toys that I'm probably never gonna have time to play with but now I'm playing with them anyway. So um, let's go to the table and see what I got. First I got I got some more battery terminals for my the battery bank that I'm building and it's just like this. I got five new sets. Uh, it's a plus and a minus and the last time I ordered these I bought 10 sets uh, which turned out that it um, was only 5 sets so I had to order 5 more so uh, these, are, these were fairly expensive but, well it only says 5 dollars then I bought some LEDs that I I want to do a, a camera ring. I was thinking about that at least. Uh, right now I am actually using a camera ring. I don't have a mirror. Yeah, I have a mirror. Wait a minute. Here you can see yourself and me. Hi. But I have this camera ring and if you see in the middle there's a dark spot. And if I just turn this around, you can see when I go into something there is a black hole <laughs> in the middle and that's because the wide angle lens is blocking the, the diode. This ring is not big enough. So I kind of fell over these YouTube videos where they were doing a camera ring. And I bought these diodes on my favorite place to buy things, AliExpress. Um, and this, oh, they, they cost next to nothing. It was like 60 cents per piece. And this is a 10 watt 12 volt light diode and it gives out a lot of light. We're gonna have a look at that in just a little bit. Also for my battery bank, I bought, I bought this guy. And it's kind of a little voltmeter. Let's just get it out of the plastic. Here it is. It's a little voltmeter that on the top it, it can measure the voltage and in the bottom it can it can measure amperage. And this one is a okay, see the black spot, pretty irritating. So I have to get out of it and see if I can get too much light. So, yeah, I think that's better. This one is a 0 to 50 amps and 0 to 100 volts. That's important because I want to use it on my battery bank and that's 48 volts. So I need the, need the high voltage and I need it to read how many amps I'm drawing out of the battery bank. And it comes with a, sh this is called a shunt. And what this does is that you, the amperage that you use, the power that you're using, you send it through this piece of metal right here in the middle. And that piece of metal, when there is a high amperage coming through it, it will resist it. It will act like a resistor. And when it's a resistor, there is a voltage between these two spots because there's this piece in between. And this little thing will measure that and tells us how much of an amperage that is coming through there. And this one should be good for 50 amps. That's, they're actually written it down here. 50 amps, uh, 75 millivolts. And I have it, I have it set up right over here. I have two power supplies here. I have one. This one is delivering 12 volts. And the bottom one is delivering whatever. I'm just gonna power that on. Right now it's it says it's delivering one amp. And the little display it, it can read right now because I have this uh, resistor here on the table where the, the voltage and the amperage is going through and it's pulling down the voltage to 0.6 volts and 
0.65 amps. So this one says 0.65 amps. This this one over here says one amp. So I'm pretty sure this is off. There's a couple of, of screws on the back that can offset it. I can I can calibrate this. There's two screws and I'm guessing that there is one for the voltage and one for the amperage. So I'm gonna be calibrating this one as soon as I know which one is which. Okay, so if I turn up the amps, like four amps, now it shows 3.62 amps. So it's kind of linear. So it's probably the screw just has to. Oh, somebody asked about my automatic fuse that I installed in my power supply and that just kicked out. So apparently something bad is going on here. It's on again, but the idea is that I want to. I have bought two of these, and right now I'm, I'm building two battery banks of 48 volts, and I want to put one on each, so that I can see the amount of power that are being drawn from each battery bank. I'm gonna lead them through the the shunt and measure the the voltage and the power that is being drawn. So that was the that was the idea of that bargain, and. Really, a little thing like this is like six dollars fifty something. I did just see that the price had gone up to seven. No big deal compared to what I paid for electronics when I was back in school. It's nothing. But when the power supply has chosen not to play with us, and let's put some power on one of the light diodes. I'm gonna make sure that. It's 12 volts. I'm gonna reduce the power a little. These are 10 watts, so about about an amp of power should be okay. Let's just set the multimeter to 800 milliamps. There's no cooling on this, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fire it up very long. This is like one diode. It, it lights up the place pretty good. It's pretty dark over here because I'm not, I'm not filming over there, so. And I'm gonna turn it off again before I damage it. Okay, I've, I've turned off some of the lights down here in the basement. I only got this lamp and it's a fluorescent light thingy. I think it's 18 watts. So I'm gonna turn on this. Um, it's not even 10 watts. It's uh, it's just below 10 watts right now. That gives a lot of light. That's incredible. See the amount of light that that gives. to cool it off. It gets really hot really fast. That's that's kind of cool. I'll just turn on my camera lights here again. Well as as I said these things really get hot. Can't touch the back of it but it looks like this. Uh, it's just a little piece of metal. Oh it got very dark now just a little piece of metal on the back and there is these two leads there is one that has a clear sign of a minus right there and there's a plus sign up here and you just hook it up to 12 volts and it lights pretty brightly it needs a lot of cooling because after that little I've only used this while we've been shooting I haven't tested it off off camera I have a cooking pan here and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hit you that would be fun, but well, um, it's made out of aluminium, and everybody knows that aluminium is a really good heat sink. So I've seen someone else do this, and I was gonna copy that, and they kind of just 
mounted the light diodes in the pan. Made a, made a hole in the middle so that it could go over the lens. I don't know if you can see that. Like go over the lens like this. Yeah, you get the idea. I would make a hole in the middle and the lens will be sticking out here. And I would mount the light diodes around the pan and they would be flashing out like this in kind of all directions and some of them straight forward too. And this has a, a lot larger diameter than the one I'm using right now. I have to clean it up. This has been used for cooking. It's a really cheap one. I don't want to sacrifice a good one. And the cheap one is also the light one. It will probably become very hot. That was the plan. I don't think I'm gonna do this today. And I think aluminium, I should be able to, to make a hole through it with a, with a wood uh, hole saw. And then I would like to uh, this has a Teflon surface on it. Uh, I would probably get rid of that. Take some sandpaper and just sand it down so that it became nice and shiny. And that would help the lights, I think. And probably paint it black on the, or maybe not. I have no idea. I might clean it first. Or actually, no, I would, I would sand it on the, on the back too so yeah that's a project I don't think I'm actually gonna use all 20 light diodes I think that would be too much that will be like 200 watts of 12 volts 20 amps that would be a rather large battery that would probably give me limited uh, recording time or lighting time this one is pretty good uh, it runs on for AA batteries and it lasts quite a long time. Actually, the, it's also rechargeable, so right. It's, the manual says don't use rechargeable batteries in it, but I choose to do that anyway. I was thinking about what to do with the handle here because this would look stupid, but I think what I could do, I could take off the handle and turn it around and mount it again. So the, if this is how the pan is gonna, if this is how the pan, the camera will be here, the lens will be sticking out here. So the handle would, would turn it around so the handle would go back this way. Instead of this way, it would go this way. And that could be used for something. This might get heavy. Now this is more or less just a random talk about what is going on. And right here I'm still playing with this desulfator even though I have a good idea that it's not really doing very much. It says 13 volts. Um, let's take the battery analyzer and see how, how this is doing anyway. I've hooked up the battery analyzer and I have the have the old note here. And let's choose this is a maintenance free battery, so that's that one. That one. And it says more or less exactly the same that it has always done. So. Well, I'm kind of losing every hope for this battery desulfating project thing. I haven't ordered new ones yet. Um, I did look at some, but I thought they were a bit too expensive, so I didn't buy those. Up here in the living room where I installed the door, I have this weekend uh, installed this fiber drywall on the wall and I fixed the, the light switches in a nice white casing which makes it looks look really good done and I had bought a, sh a cover for this part up here but I got I thought that this one would fit there very well so I bought a set of these covers and it turns out that they don't fit I have them right here so I cheated out, it, 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 it goes in there really nice, or oh, did it, does it, no it's too short, so I have to get a new one, I thought this was a really good deal, I got two of those and I was just gonna save that for to use for something else and it was the same price, now I have to go get a white one for this one because it didn't fit and this is under really good, I've been, I've been using tiling adhesive 
to glue it on the wall. So that's, I'm really happy with that. The wall is so fragile and behind there. I've used tiling adhesive to glue it on there and I've used these big screws. I have them over here. Let's see them. Really big ones. And to fasten them inside the wall, I, I pre-drilled with this drill down here. Uh, I've marked the drill bit with some red tape down there to mark how far I had to drill into the wall because this wall is not very thick. So to prevent uh, me drilling through the wall, <laughs> which I could have done easily if I hadn't done that. I put on some red tape and to have the wall is so fragile inside so I had to put some this is just pieces of stick it's used for putting in flowers and tie, tying up the flowers and sticking those drilling a hole and sticking these in and then having the screw fastened to these inside and the screws are not really necessary it's just to get a good contact with the tiling adhesive so right now it's not going anywhere. I just put it up this morning. So yeah, that's what have been going on mostly here. I haven't been doing that much video this weekend. I, you might have seen the video with the updates of my bracelets, my lower bracelets, and it's, it has been so sore and I've had a kind of a headache, so I haven't done much. Uh, I really ought to play with some computer stuff, um, but I haven't gone around to doing that. So mostly I've just been sitting on YouTube, like you're doing right now. So, well, I'm just like you <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah, thank you for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel and join me over at Google+. Plus. I post pictures there from time to time to show what's going on. And you have the opportunity to interact with the videos coming out. Um, also, there's a comment, you can comment below the video and you can like over here, the like button. I enjoy that a lot. So, yeah, thank you for being there. Have a really nice day. Bye-bye.